right, so today we're going to be going over some uh, common mistakes that people make with the buggy choke. The first most common mistake I see people make is probably one of the most dangerous ones. A lot of people end up locking it up and they start wrenching on their knee. And it becomes super dangerous for themselves. So I'm in side control. And I go to lock with the buggy choke. I see a lot of people, they'll lock it up and they'll have like a, a grip here and they just begin pulling the leg towards themselves. This is super, super dangerous and puts a lot of pressure on your knee. That's not what we're looking for, right? So ideally, I wanna have uh, my elbow as close to my knee as possible. So we're here and then I have a gable grip here. And the finishing shouldn't be me squeezing my foot towards my chest or towards my face. It should be me dragging the shoulder down towards my hip. That should be the finishing mechanic. So it should be like so. Right, so I'm not uh, taking the uh, leg and pulling it towards myself or squeezing in any sort of uh, motion, putting any sort of torque on my knee. It should just be all uh, kind of uh, downward pressure with my shoulder. So we lock it up. My elbow is as close to my knee as possible. You can finish it like so, where I'm just grabbing my foot. You can finish it with gable grip. You can finish it with figure four. There's plenty of different variations, but for you guys at home, just to stay safe, bring your shoulder down to your hip. That should be the main finishing mechanic rather than wrenching on your knee. All right, so another common uh, mistake that I see a lot of people making when it comes to the buggy choke, right? A lot of people come up to me and say, hey, I, I have uh, good finishing mechanics, but I'm having trouble locking it up initially, right? So in order to be able to lock it up tightly, being flat on your back is good. Like it is possible to lock it up while you're flat on your back, but it is a bit longer of a reach as opposed to being somewhere on your hips or on your ribs. So if I'm on, your, on my ribs, there's less uh, distance for me to connect my elbow to my knee, right? It's, I'm not even reaching here and my knee and my elbow is already touching like so. So it's a lot easier for me to underhook and lock up the buggy choke uh, like so. So in order to get uh, like on your hip, uh, on your ribs, I'm gonna take like double, uh, like, I guess like thumb posts in my opponent's shoulder. And with my left leg, I'm gonna begin pressuring in just to help uh, build up towards uh, my ribs. And then I can begin kind of scooting my hips out like so, uh, just to help kind of be in a better position if I have to. Once I'm done uh, posting by my opponent's shoulder to also continue giving me more space, I'll take a, like a forearm post or a, like a, um, my wrist in towards my opponent's hip to help lock it up like so, just to kind of keep my opponent's hips away and stop him from kind of pressuring in and squishing me uh, back to my uh, flat, uh, flat on my back. <clears throat> so one more time, I'm gonna take two uh, thumb posts in my uh, opponent's shoulder, posting on the mat heavily, like so. And then once I uh, do this kind of a short explosion, scooting my hip out and then framing by my opponent's hip. And then I can begin bringing my elbow towards my knee and under hooking like so. All right, so the last kind of uh, mistake that I see a lot of people making, especially in real sets like ADCC where you can slam out of submissions. It can be super dangerous when you uh, lock up a buggy choke and your opponent begins standing up, right? They have, they're allowed to slam you, so it's super dangerous. So you have to know when to let go, right? Um, so to begin, once I have it locked up, to if I have it fully locked up, I'm gonna try to begin uh, as I mentioned before, framing by my opponent's hips, whether it's with my forearm or I'll insert my knee as well across my opponent's uh, uh, hips like so. So I have my uh, kind of shin going across my opponent's hips and forearm as well, kind of framing to stop any sort of posturing from going on. That's ideally what I'm looking for and it also helps uh, with finishing right, just flans our opponent out, gets him in a position where he's like, he's less compact, uh, gets him elongated, makes it easier for us to finish the buggy choke and it also negates any sort of uh, posturing that our opponents will do. But if he does begin posturing, like so, 
You have to know when to let go, right? If he begins posturing so much, and I feel like I can get an underhook on the leg, I'll begin doing so. But if I'm not able to get the underhook and he can just begin posturing, I'm just gonna have to know when to let go, right? If he begins dead lifting me off the mat, it's probably a good cue to let go. Uh, so we'll do that one time next yeah. year alive. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the, the choke comes up harder when I'm trying to stand up. So we have the buggy choke. Uh, if, we're, if we're trying to negate any sort of posturing of our opponent, we're going to frame with our forearm by his uh, hips and insert my knee across like so. This helps uh, elongate our opponent. It helps with the finish and it also stops any sort of uh, posturing that our opponent will be able to do. If he does begin posturing, we have to either begin looking for underhooks to keep us nice and tight and close to the mat. If I'm not able to get an underhook and he still continues posturing, I'm gonna have to let go, right? So you have to preserve, you know, it's okay to let go of a buggy choke. Buggy choke isn't always gonna work. You need your brain, so stay safe. <laughs> All right, so here were some, uh, you know, simple kind of uh, fixes that I see a lot of people um, having when they're they're coming up to me and asking me about all the, you know, kind of mistakes that are having with the buggy choke. So I hope this helped you guys. Um, a lot of people know me as the buggy man. You know, I do the buggy choke a lot. So I, I do have a lot of su success with that. I've had success with it in competition before. If you want to see more about the buggy choke, check out bjjfanatics.com. Uh, you'll find my instructionals there.